my name is Anastasia and today we're going to be talking about my autism diagnosis. So in my last video I did mention that I was recently diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and I didn't really go into detail about that um, but I am, like I said, changing my whole YouTube channel based on just the fact that I was diagnosed because it kind of opened a lot of doors and windows for me and I don't know, it just made me feel like me. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I guess the first thing, um, I got a late diagnosis. I wasn't diagnosed with autism until I turned, I think it was right after my birthday, so 22. But um, I self-diagnosed at 21. I self-diagnosed in November of 2019. I just learned about autism. In August 2019, I had no idea, I mean, I knew what autism was, but I didn't really know, like, the traits and characteristics and what, I don't know, I just didn't really know a whole lot about autism. So, obviously, I didn't really think that I could be autistic until I clicked on a video on YouTube. Um, her video isn't up anymore, I checked. Um, but it was diagnosed with Asperger's at 24 and basically she just talked about all the traits that she had and um, something in me just clicked and I was like yes that makes sense why have I not known this my whole life <laughs> so I did a whole bunch of research for months before I even decided to go um, to my doctor and actually see if I could be on the spectrum. Um, so like I said, I self-diagnosed around November. Um, that was also around the time I made my Salem video. I'm going to go into detail about how my spirituality affects, affects or not affects, I guess like corresponds with my autism make sense because I feel like my spirituality definitely has a big impact on my autism so after I watched a video I just went straight to my family doctor and honestly the diagnosis process wasn't that difficult for me I know a lot of people say they have problems um, getting diagnosed and they're put on this huge waiting list for years or months and for me that just wasn't the case um, I do live in the US so I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it or my insurance or whatever, but my doctor did know about like other mental health problems that I was having. Um, like I said, I do have a history of depression, anxiety, panic disorder, so um, she didn't have a problem with like, she didn't have a problem with me seeing um, like an actual therapist or whatever. Um, and because she didn't really know anything about autism, she was okay with me speaking with somebody that does know about autism. So once she referred me to an AS ASD specialist, um, I then made an appointment with her and again, the process was super easy. Like she literally just asked me a couple questions, or not a couple, but a bunch of questions based um, on like my past and like my childhood and like how I acted with people and or how I do act with people, I guess. I don't really want to go into detail about like all the questions or whatever, but um, basically she just asked me a bunch of questions and she was like, yes, you're on the spectrum or no, you're on the spectrum. And right away she said, yes, I'm on the spectrum. Um, she did also notice that the entire conversation, the entire time I was talking to her, I was rocking back and forth. I mean, obviously unintentionally, but like, I guess that's just, um, like a relaxing stim for me and when I'm really nervous I do that um, so yeah she was like yeah you're on the spectrum so yeah my diagnosis process wasn't difficult at all and immediately afterwards I just felt so at peace with myself and just I just felt like myself but I also felt really overwhelmed and I didn't really know what to do with that information either because 
there's not a whole lot of information on women on the spectrum because we tend to mask our symptoms. And what that means is we basically hide our true selves to fit into society. And we think that's normal. I felt like I was hiding a part of me my whole life and I didn't know what it was or why I was feeling that way. So I got my answer. I started realizing like all the things that I did when I was younger, how I felt about things a little bit more. Like once I was diagnosed, it just made me think about that stuff more in depth and I, it just, I don't know, it just blew my mind, honestly. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I just, I felt really good getting my diagnosis. Once you're, once you get a late diagnosis, no one even believes that you have autism because you're, you put yourself through all this hard work to fit in. And you basically have to undo all that hard work you did. At least that's how it felt with me. Like, once I was diagnosed, I just, I felt like I had to relearn everything. And it was really overwhelming for me. And it was really overwhelming for my family, I think, because they saw me a certain way or whatever. And here I'm like, oh, well actually I'm this way. I mean, overall, I do feel really good about getting my diagnosis and I wouldn't go back. Uh, like I said, I just finally feel like myself and it's really good to feel like that. Like, why would I wanna hide who I really am, you know? I don't think anyone should hide who they really are. And I, I think if you're questioning whether you're on the spectrum or not, What's getting checked out gonna do? It's not gonna hurt you. You're either gonna find out that you are or you're not. So that was just the best option for me. And I don't think I, I could have kept going on like self-diagnosed because while I could say yes, I have all these traits that show that I am autistic, it just, I don't know, I just needed to hear the confirmation, I guess. But yeah, so that was my diagnosis story, and thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you guys to everyone that um, asked me to make this video, and it was really fun, and yeah, so see you guys in my next video, bye!